name is uh, Tahir Sahli. I am a journalist and a filmmaker. I am a Palestinian refugee born in Syria. And right now I'm a refugee here in the Netherlands. I am a member of uh, uh, gathering uh, youth, uh, creative people. We called our self reaction. We specialized with uh, imaging and filming and uh, document uh, our stories, our uh, tales in this place, which you have been seen uh, for a moment. Its name uh, Yarmouk Camp. It's for a Palestinian refugee in southern of Damascus. We established around uh, 2008, before the war, before the revolution in Syria, 2011 start the revolution. We have been worked to pick up our stories, our daily stories, our normal stories without stereotypes, without agendas, without uh, political issues, just the normal people of li the life of normal people. And when the war starts, the situation change because we start with a stand-up comedy pushing people to laugh about themselves or about their situations but when the revolution start and the war start our condition change so we start to laughing people and spot <coughs> on what's going on around us because in totalitarian uh, regimes, you can't get your cameras on the streets and start to film. It's, it's forbidden. Even people, they, they didn't have courage to sit up in front of camera and telling their stories. They're afraid from the camera and they're afraid from whom this camera works for. Anyway, I'm here tonight to tell you about imaging at that period because we were looking for tales, normal tales, then we start to document crimes for Amnesty International or Human Rights Watch because the media doesn't have you know, the, the power or access for the accidents have been happened there. It's our duty because we belong for the society and people trust us. So we, we start to document crimes, but it wasn't enough because it was huge crimes. Crimes inter interfere our lives, our normal lives. So I will tell you the story about two cameras. The red one, which I get it from French uh, journalist, he were, uh, or he was working like a reporter for Fran France Kaltour in Damascus, and he had been arrested uh, through the security forces, and they accused him that he have a gun in his house and he is a spy. Anyway, after one month, the French embassy take him away, from, take him out from the prison, and he saw me at that night. He gave me this very simple Samsung camera with the broken door and he told me I can't live here anymore take it and use it because he he know what we have been done with Human Rights Watch and Amnesty <coughs> this camera I left it in Yarmouk uh, this camera I filmed a huge part of uh, Meg Meg is my uh, first uh, documentary. I, fil I film with s five cameras in one film because situation is different. So I start with this uh, Samsung camera. I film 10 of hours. Then I forced to go out Yarmouk, the refugee camp, because uh, after the MiG strike, the Militant group occupied Yarmouk and uh, 
they arrest us twice when we have been filming on the street. And it was, you know, one week f we are free. There is no uh, Syrian regime and there is no any power could tell you what you should film or what you shouldn't film. So we filmed everything, our place, our streets, our narrows, our details. This Samsung camera served us, helped us. So when I left Yarmouk, I gave it for friends of mine. One of them, after one month, he got killed when he was filming the besiege of Yarmouk. Because Yarmouk, since three years under siege, people have been starving there. 190 persons have been died because they didn't find anything to eat. Anyway, I gave this camera for my friend, and he got killed after one month. And he gave the camera, the camera, one of our colleagues get the camera because it's belong for the group. And he start to, to, to film. And sniper shoot him. He died after two months because of his wound. Then the fourth man or the third man get the camera and he got killed throwing the mortars when it was bombing everywhere. Those guys throw out throw the camera away and they didn't want to, to, to use it anymore because it's a brain dead, death. And it's it's red camera, so it's bloody camera. And I would like to tell you about this camera. This is a spy camera and it's around 100 uh, euros, cost 100 euros. And if you carry this camera or camera like this or any ca camera in Syria, it's like you carry Kalashnikov AK. You should go to prison directly because you are doing something forbidden in the normal days. What about the war? Anyway, this camera, it's, you know, take me everywhere. No one will notice that I'm using something because people, they act when they see the camera, they, they, they start to act and they start to fret because the time is a freeze and someone document what, what they are saying. So I use this camera to, to, to filming and to document. When the MIG show in Yermuk, I was stand with the brother of Dunia, my wife, in the main street of Yermuk, and I saw the MIG uh, came from uh, the sky and I hear the scary voice and I saw the explosions and the dust and smoke, everything it was alive, you see it. So I, I take it on, I thought that I press on. Then I start to run around 700 meters and I start to saw people go f from the dust, from the smokes and their faces with the blood, and I realized this is 200 or 100 meters from the hospital that she was volunteered to work w with the civilians. So I, I reached the area, someone told me it's in the mosque, and I should go from the gate of the mosque to reach the, the hospital. When I reached the gate of the mosque, I found half of man. He was still alive. Before I, I reached this man, I, I was fil filming the, the flash of people, the brains on the walls, on the streets, the teeth of people. Anyway, I reached there, I saw this man, and he started to look at my hand, and I start to look at my hand and on my eyes. I start to look at him. I wonder if he was questioning me, what you are doing, man? You should help me. But there is nothing to do for uh, half of man because there is a ten like them, like him, and around. It wasn't work. So I, I never use it. I never use it not because it wasn't work like 
at that time, that important time, because I use the mobile and I have my shoots for the film. It wasn't work, and there is no camera could bring for any audience the smell of, of barbecue people or, or the scared of people. No camera can bring that to you, or no, no experience could be expressed through film or through, through novel. What I want to answer about the question if all those conflicts could be settled, I don't know. Really, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't know because I lost, I lost my friends through this journey because when I gave the camera for my friend, he told me, go and tell, go out and tell. And I gave him the film that I, I made. <coughs> he, he told me, go and tell. And I'm, since three years, I'm telling, but nothing had changed. My father came, <coughs> sorry, my father came to Syria like a refugee when he was four years old, and I born there, there like a refugee for 33 years old. I, I spent it like a refugee there, and my son maybe will become refugee, because nothing had changed. I don't know if those conflicts could be settled. This is an answer should deliver it to me. Because I try to tell, I try to, to, to reach all the people that I met. But I don't know if it's worth really or not. What is worth it? People like you, interesting to hear Another stories, not through the media, not through the uh, main uh, television channels, directly to people. And I came with, with, with no, I, I, I am so sorry because I tell you stories sad like this. I hope that uh, there is happy stories in my pocket to give it to you. I have happy stories to give it, but there is many stories worth than the happiness because it's a life, it's a life of the main uh, actor of reaction. He was a comedian man, no one could understand him because he speak in Arabic, he didn't know any another language, but if you watch him, you start to laugh. And we called him the man of gathering because everyone go to his house. This man have been tortured and have been killed alone just because he wants people to, to love and to, to be happy. This is what I want from you when you go back to home, to be happy and to remember that there is hundreds of people trying every day to deliver stories for you, and they should have ears to hear what they what they're trying to say and delivering to you. To you. Thank you. <coughs>